This is a major longevity thing that's dirt cheap. If you need eight hours to feel rested, you're not getting quality sleep. The people who live the longest get your odds of dying from all-cause mortality go up dramatically. Healthy people who are gonna live a long time, they require the biggest hack for that. The people who live the longest get six and a half hours of sleep, not eight hours. If you need eight hours every single night to feel rested, well, maybe you're just someone who's off the edge of the average curve, but more likely you're not getting quality sleep. So you can have more low quality sleep or less high quality sleep. And if you need eight hours or even worse, 10 hours, your odds of dying from all cause mortality go up dramatically. You're healthier to sleep six hours versus eight hours statistically, except Restricting sleep is bad for you. The idea here is healthy people who are gonna live a long time, they require less sleep because they have less stress, they have less toxins, and they know how to get good sleep. And I've had to do a lot of work on my own circadian biology to get there. The biggest hack for that is something called True Dark. I'm wearing the daytime glasses, but we have glasses for the evening that uh, we just released a study. In 15 minutes, they have the same effect on your brain as advanced meditation. <laughs> just from wearing the right color filters, it's, it's not just blue blocking. It's not, uh, that's what it, I was it's, ask. it's called True Dark. It's a proprietary filter of five different colors. Amazing, so yeah, that's interesting. So sleep is a marker. Now for me, I need eight plus hours a night and no, sometimes, sometimes even 12. And I think it's because, like you said, my quality of sleep is so bad. When you say you and need it, you don't really need it. It's right now, it's what your body's getting, right? And if we were to teach you to go to sleep in less time and to go into deep sleep for a higher percentage, you'd find that the need just became like, you're not an expert. It takes 10 minutes to run a mile or you learn how to do it and it takes six minutes, right? So like you're just untrained and most people are. And there's so much around sleep hygiene, there's so much you can do with all the environmental variables, and this is a direct longevity anti-aging activity. So for that, kind of the summary of everything I know about sleep, because I answer this a lot, sleepwithdave.com. It's, <laughs> it's totally free, it's, just a, it's, it's a summary of all the stuff I could tell you about how to do this. I was a guy who would sleep between six and 12 hours, I always felt the same, crappy. I got five minutes of deep sleep, and about 10 minutes of REM sleep, if I was lucky, per night. I get 90 minutes of deep sleep and 90 minutes of REM sleep just about every night, even if I sleep five and a half hours. Wow. So last night I slept five hours because I had two flat tires. <laughs> and I'm now running a conference for 3,000 people in the biohacking conference, and I feel great, and I'm focused, and I'm not just destroyed. I would have been destroyed when I was 25 and I did this. And the reason is, that sleep was really good. Gotcha. Now, I know you, for someone like me, I have some sort of breathing problems when I mm -hmm. sleep, like apnea, I'm snoring. I saw you posted something recently about mouth taping. I've been mouth taping for six years, and it was James Nestor, uh, who's a friend who wrote the book Breathe, really good book on breath work. And he talked about it. So what you do is you put a little piece of tape right here. You can just search for sleep tape, and when you do that, it's not really sticky, it doesn't seal your mouth, the edges are open if you need to breathe, and it triggers a reflex to cause your sinuses to open up. And I measure my snoring every night with a sound meter that tells me the minutes of snoring, and I'm snoring for less than 10 minutes a night. I used to be an hour plus snoring kind of person. What you eat affects your snoring. You can also get nasal stents that push your nose open, you can try the tape, but frankly, mouth taping is life-changing even for people who don't snore. The reason? It increases nitric oxide, it increases oxygen in the brain. More oxygen in your brain when you're sleeping means better quality sleep, which means you need less of it. So what is the byproduct of snoring? Why, why, why is this happening? When you're snoring, well, not only are you interrupting your partner, <laughs> but you're also interrupting your own sleep rhythms. So this is when the body basically isn't breathing very well. There's sort of two kinds. There's the kind where you gasp for air, which is the beginning of sleep apnea. And then there's just the kind where you're not breathing fully. If you sleep on your back, your jaw falls back and it closes the, the back of your airway. When you tape your mouth, it causes you to breathe through your nose, which helps. I also put a bite guard in place when I sleep. This is a major longevity thing that's dirt cheap. 
As you age, your molars get shorter because you grind your teeth when you're asleep, even if you're not a heavy grinder. So put a little rubber gasket in there and then your teeth don't get low. When your teeth get low, it changes your posture, it makes your head go forward, and it's a major contributor <laughs> to a loss of motion because your jaw controls where your body thinks it is in space. So you protect your sleep, you protect your teeth when you sleep, you close your mouth, and it affects your snoring, but it also affects your quality of sleep.